let's start with a question. Are you learning as fast as the business world is changing? Is it changing? Yes. How fast? Pretty fast. I mean, if you take a look, Kodak in 2012 filed for bankruptcy. At one point, they had 145,000 employees. That same year in April, Instagram was sold to Facebook. At the time, they had 13 employees and no revenue. Facebook paid a billion dollars for no revenue and 13 employees. I'd say the world's changing. Some firms have been able to adjust. IBM. In 2000, hardware represented about 45% of their sales. In 2012, it was down to 14%. And the nice way to say that is it's called adapting to changing circumstances. The problem is change is hard. It's very, very difficult. Why? Because we develop habits and procedures. You know, sometimes, somewhere, somebody told you to always continue learning. And when you're in college, it's pretty easy, and you're bouncing around from course to course. You learn quite a bit, or at least you're exposed to quite a bit. But once you go to work, work forces you to become a specialist. And you do continue to learn, but your learning goes deep, and you lose some of your breadth. And so when you face something new, you have a tendency to fall back on experience and habits. And the problem with experience and habits is that they don't always help you when you face something entirely new. IBM's a good role model, and they're good role models in all kinds of places if you know where to look. Now, the key for us as we move forward is start to realize that we might have to change the way we think. And changing your thinking is a whole lot about what you know, what you experience, and how you view things. For example, let me get, ask you another question. How many of you can draw? You know, I ask that question to audiences of various sizes. And I always only have just a few people raise their hand. Are you raising your hand? Can you draw? Actually, why is it only a few? Because their experience has taught them to add a, question, add a word to my question. The word they add is well. Can you draw well? But I didn't ask that. You know, what's funny is if I go into a kindergarten and say, how many of you can draw? What do they do? They're raising, all of them are raising their hand because they think somebody's going to get to. See, sometimes you got to change the way you think. And kids are good. They're a good role model because they're curious. And if you're going to be a learner, you have to be curious. What's that curiosity revolve around? Well, one of the best examples I can talk to you about is from my discipline, marketing. Marketing is everywhere. That's actually one of its advantages. The problem is, is that people think they know it based on their experiences. And so the popular notion of what marketing is, advertising and sales, is true, but it's not completely true. It's actually one end of the continuum. Really, what is marketing? Marketing is the ability to influence people to move in targeted directions despite obstacles. It's all about influence. And it's about learning how to influence people ethically. Why ethically? Because my mother told me I wasn't smart enough to be a good liar. So you deal with the truth. You don't have to lie, cheat, or steal to win in the marketplace. There are ways to do it. And that's what marketing teaches us. If we learn all the phases, 
sales and advertising, we learned that early. It's the I Me Mind game. Let me tell you about my product, my service, my location, my university. The problem with that is that it doesn't take into account who you're speaking to. It's what we call the I Me Mind game. And the whole purpose there is to find a bigger foghorn, <laughs> something you can make more noise with, to get more attention. But attention is, just flies away. It's not enough. It's part of marketing, not enough. If you went to business school, there's a good chance you had a marketing course and you learned about this. Target market into four P's. Product, place, promotion, price. Nice and mnemonic for undergraduates to understand. And the idea was if you had goals and implementation, now this is a marketing strategy. And this is what most people think of. Either here, the most popular, or B-School grads, they have some sense of knowing this, but eventually get drawn over here. And then over here, where I want you to go, is called marketing philosophy. And a marketing philosophy is a way of thinking to guide action. That's why I call it a philosophy, because that's what it is, guiding action. And to give you some sense of that, let's take a look at an old T account, uh, looking at what you sell, whether it's product service, a location, city, county, parish, state, region, and what your customer Bias. Ted Lovett of Harvard taught all of us in one of his articles about quarter inch drills. That's what you sell. What do customers buy? Well, in reality, what they buy is the expectation of benefits. They're buying a drill, but they really buy a quarter inch hole. And if you start thinking about the people you want to influence, remember that's what marketing's about, about influence, then that's what you start to think. You start thinking about what's the benefit the person wants to receive. So if you're selling electricity, this is a cost. Everything over here is cost. What are people buying? Comfort. And why is that important? Because this doesn't have the value this does. And if you start here and work backwards to what you're selling, it makes it a whole lot easier to influence people. And that's really what marketing philosophy is about. Stephen Covey in his highly popular book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the fifth habit, he captured the essence of a marketing philosophy. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. It really makes a difference in what you do and how you do it. How you think about the decisions you're making. How you think about the people that are going to be influenced. Because every decision in business is to influence people. To help achieve the objectives that you want to achieve. And that's what marketing is about. It's not just talking loud. It's not just about strategy. It's helping the people you want to influence achieve the goals that they have. You understand them and their goals. It's a whole lot easier to bring all your expertise about what you want to achieve to the table and to be able to speak with them such that they'll want to pay attention. That's marketing. That's a simple look. Now, There are two things that are especially great about studying marketing. Number one, marketing works if you use it. But you got to use it. You got to think philosophy. Second, you can learn from anybody who's good at what they do. And there are a lot of people that are good at what they do. What's on the face of every child walking into McDonald's? They have a smile. And who put it there? McDonald's did. 
Why? Because the child, as they walk in, they're anticipating having a good time. The question that occurs to me is how come department stores haven't done that with their customers? What's on the face of everybody walking into a department store? You know what? You could do the same thing. I mean, what would a department store look like if Walt Disney had designed it? See what happens when you start looking at things a little bit different? You start thinking a little bit different? It's kind of like what Sherlock Holmes told Dr. Watson. We see, but you don't observe. So what we want to do is to teach you how to observe, how to think about customers so that you too can have power to get what you want to achieve. This fall, we're going to have a course, Marketing and Economic Development. Uh, it's taught in executive format, a day and a half, face-to-face, uh, -face, and then the rest of the eight weeks will be uh, online. We look forward to having you, if you'd like to learn more about marketing, or economic development, because that's what it is, economic development marketing. We'd like to have you come join us. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to contact me. And if you're not sure about what economic development is, this is how we characterize it at Southern Mints. Create and attract new business. Retain and expand existing business. And while the, this is the side that gets most of the headlines, this is the side that sets up your gravity. Gravity is attraction. And how do you attract and create? These people are successful. The more successful your existing business is, the easier it is to create and attract. So the question is, what can an economic development professional do for existing business? And do public officials like existing business? Yes, one of the best things in their budget is sales tax revenue. So a couple of ideas on that. How do you increase retailers' sales tax income? Do that by helping them increase their sales. So what do you do? You teach them. You change that question when you walk into a retail store. May I help you? And what you do is you have the people who are interacting with your customers start a conversation. These people went out of their way. They're walking into a retail store. There's a good chance if you start a conversation, they'll get around to why they're there. And plus you'll have a whole lot more information that you can build your knowledge products and services that you have to fit their individual needs, much more likely to make a sale. That's one thing you can do. So, One other piece that's important is recognizing the only real competitive advantage a retail store has. It's not the products they sell. It's not the services they sell. That's all intensely competitive. Very, very few businesses today have something that's uniquely theirs, that they sell, except one thing, and that's the individuals that work there. That's what makes you different than everybody else. That's how you compete. And how do you do that? You align your resources around maximizing what individuals can do. And you'll be surprised what happens when you learn another thing from Walt Disney. Treat your customers like guests. And if you want to know more about that, send us an email. Thank you for paying attention all the way to the end.